Why do we travel? Is it to see new things? Or to try new things? Is it to go back centuries? Or to be in the moment? Is it to take pictures? Or to take action? We travel to see the works of sculptors and painters and to imitate their techniques. We travel to meet bakers and chefs and to saute in their kitchens. We travel to meet farmers, vintners and brewers and to taste their divine secrets. We go out into the world to forge new paths and to discover old ones. We follow sweet aromas alluring fragrances, and complex bouquets. We pedal and paddle, jog and climb, dabble and dance, and even march to the beat of our own drum. We journey to examine and explore, to listen and learn, and to engage and enjoy, with hands on and hands off. We travel to walk in the footsteps of all who have come before us. Warriors and soldiers, emperors and kings, sailors and sirens, architects and builders, none of whom, by the way, were ever bystanders. So when we travel, why should we be? Engage, interact, indulge, only on active discovery cruises exclusively from Avalon Waterways. Good evening and welcome to Travel Talk with Lori. And we have a very special guest tonight who we're going to be talking about healthy traveling. So, Miss Jean, I'm going to let you introduce, tell us all about all the wonderful things you do to help us all stay healthy. Stay and, healthy. <laughs> and then. Okay, uh, my name is Jean White. I am a certified health coach. Um, I practiced as a family nurse practitioner for most of my life. And when I retired, I was looking for something to do. I didn't want to just <laughs> hang up and not do anything for you. <laughs> so I've got to watch TV the rest of my life. So I decided that health coaching would be a good way to use my knowledge and my experience and my skills in order to continue to help people uh, to, to be healthy, which is what I did as a nurse practitioner. So um, I. So now I'm a certified health coach and I'm a certified clinical weight loss practitioner. So um, that's, you know, basically what I do is to help people be healthy. I specialize in weight management and in blood pressure control through diet and lifestyle changes and uh, in blood sugar, keeping your blood sugar uh, at a healthy level to prevent diabetes or to manage it once you have it. And there's a few other things you do too, like during hurricane season. Oh yeah, that's... <laughs> I volunteer to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a volunteer with the uh, North Carolina uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Um, and we have a um, disaster relief team. And I'm on that team, so whenever there's a disaster, a hurricane or something, I get deployed to go and, uh, and do that. And I, I do the medical part as well as the administrative sure. part of that. So I'm in the office. Once I make an office, when I get there, there's yes. not one there, you know. I create an office and get it set up. Then people come in when they get injured or sick, they come in to see me, and then I, and I do the administrative stuff to make facilitate them being there and getting, you know, if nobody's there to make sure you get food and you get water and you get toilets and all so that kind of somebody, stuff in a disaster. Yes. Somebody has to has to somebody has help. to go down there and get that all set yes, up. Yes, so, yes, they do. They definitely so do. I do that. But the good thing about being a health coach is that I, most of what I do, I do by phone or by computer. So, uh, and we do have a telecommunications trailer that comes to the disaster relief site, so we always have internet. So, so I can still, so stay, I can in still stay in touch, I can still be with all of my clients, I don't have to stop doing it while I'm there. And I'm still available to them when I'm there. So now, does, do people call you up and say like, it's 8 o'clock and I'm fixing to eat this whole pack of cookies, and do you talk them down? They can. <laughs> Is that something you do? They can. I, I try to equip them so they don't have to do that. I try to equip them so they know what to do when that happens, and they can talk themselves down. Okay. But if they're trying to talk themselves down and they're not being successful, and they're just, I'm going to eat these cookies, I have to do something, they can call me. They can call yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. So we're going to be talking about healthy traveling. So what are some of the things when we're traveling? I mean, other than, I mean, we, we pretty much all know, you know, you need to eat the healthier things like salads. You know, you need to look at the other things you're eating and stay away from 
what they call desserts. But what are some of the things you recommend when people are traveling and well, they're coming to you? Well, first, there's two things before we start talking about the food itself. Number one is um, you're on vacation. Okay, I'm not going to tell you don't eat dessert, don't eat the things you love, because that's part of being on vacation. Exactly. And you're not going to, you're not going to obey those rules well, anyway, anyway, right? So why even do that? So, so let's talk about. We want you to have fun. We want you to try new things, and that means trying desserts you don't usually have at home. Let, let's let's make that feasible. Let's not overdo it, but let's not feel guilty about it. You know, let's let's have fun. Let's try things. So let's get that out of the way. We're not going to tell you not to do any of those things. Okay. And number two is that I'm a big believer that if you're doing something because somebody told you to do it or told you not to do it, you can't maintain that for very long. It has to be something you want to do. And you're only going to want to do it if you know why you're doing it. So let's talk about, for just a couple of minutes, why do we want to eat healthy on? You know, why not just go make that part of your vacation? Why not just eat everything in sight and and eat all the desserts that you want and all the rolls that you want and all the sauces and creams and everything. Why do you want to do that? Well, number one, because it will really weaken your immune system. If you're eating a lot of sugar and salt and things like that, it totally weakens your immune system. And you're on a ship with how many people? I mean, a ton of people, cool. right? And when you've got a ton of people all in close quarters like that, there's all kinds of bacteria and viruses roaming around. And if your immune system is weak, you're going to get sick. And who wants to be sick on vacation? Well, they don't. Or even if you're like in, a, in an all-inclusive where you're traveling to Europe and you're doing a tour, yeah. you're still going to have people. You're right. There's still going to be people yeah. around you. On the bus. You're you still know, in the motor crash. Yes. Everything, yeah. Exactly. Have, exactly. Even, even if you're not doing a cruise, if you're doing a, a, group, a group tour of some kind, you're going to be around a lot of people. And so, number one, you want to keep your immune system high. So if you're eating healthy uh, and not getting the inflammation setting in and your immune system is going to stay strong, you're less likely to get sick. Number two, the things you most likely eat more of than you normally would at home would be sugar and salt. Because that's where we get all the things, that the fun stuff, you know, the pizza and the desserts and the, and the pasta and the pastas, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the pasta, and the yes. rolls and the hot rolls that are smell so good and taste so good, right? So those things, your body takes them in and your blood sugar goes up because they're absorbed very, they're metabolized very quickly and go into your bloodstream very quickly. But once they go up, then what happens? Your body makes insulin to get all that blood sugar out of your bloodstream and into the cells. And so the blood sugar goes down and then you crash. So you have no energy and you're feeling sluggish. You're not thinking clearly. You know, because your blood sugar is too low. So and then you're going to have something else you shouldn't have, yeah, right? So then, you're then you think, I need sugar. Ice cream. <laughs> or cake. And, or and you go looking for sugar to get your blood sugar back up again. And, and it goes up again, but then it, it crashes again. again. Yeah. So what you want to do is to keep your blood sugar level. Your blood sugar and your insulin level, level. So when your blood sugar goes up, your insulin comes in, and your blood sugar goes down, you know, and you're, but you're eating something else. So you want to eat, but you don't want to eat sugar all the time and carbohydrates that are easily digested. Complex carbohydrates are better. That takes take longer to, to digest. So that's the second thing. Another, the third thing is who wants to go on vacation and come home 10 pounds heavier? Oh no, I know. I, know. I mean your clothes don't fit good. You, you try to get off the ship you know, <laughs> with your, your clothes too tight. You're uncomfortable, right? Exactly. And exactly. So if you can eat in a way that you don't gain all that weight while you're on a vacation, that's a good reason to not do that. So what about exercise? <coughs> is exercise a really good thing to be doing while you're on vacation? Exercise is always a good thing, but it's not a, it's not a way to lose weight. You have to exercise a whole lot to lose weight. I mean, there's like 3,500 3, calories in, in a pound. And you would have to run for two hours to get off that many calories. I mean, you're just not going to get enough exercise to do that. You exercise to stay healthy, to increase your cardiovascular capacity, to help you breathe easier, to, uh, to keep your bones and joints you know, moving and, and, and strong. You, a lot, and also for your attitude, um, to prevent depression and things like that. Uh, so, yes, you do need to, to exercise. I don't like to call it exercise <laughs> because people say, I don't want to exercise. I'm on vacation. I don't need to exercise. I call it movement. You know? So, let's move. 
Well, I mean, like, I always try to take more stairs. Exactly. Take more stairs instead of the elevator, okay? Mm -hmm. We always try to make sure we walk. When we're on a cruise ship, we try to make sure we walk a lot. Yeah. You know, instead of just, you know, like, lounging around. I'm not one of those lounging in the chair by the right. sun, by the pool people. I've, I've got to be moving. Yeah. So that's what we try to do. We try to walk as much as possible. Exactly. Take the stairs. Take the stairs the as much as possible. Yeah. Right. Um, but I will, I will have to confess, I am kind of addicted to that strawberry frozen yogurt that kind of gets me every day. <laughs> <laughs> and the pasta, okay? Because, yeah. like, I can stay away from pasta at yeah. home. When you're on vacation, it's like, we're on vacation. Let's have pasta. Okay. Well, it's easy on a cruise ship, especially when you've got 24-7 food available to you and, and you've paid for it already, to get up to 6,000 calories a day. You know, that's like two pounds a day. Yeah. And on a five-day cruise, that's 10 pounds. And that's, <laughs> that's just crazy. You, you don't want to ruin your vacation by gaining 10 pounds while you're on vacation. No, because then you come home, your clothes won't fit. Well, they don't fit when you leave the ship either. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, they don't. They don't fit when you, when you, when you, when you get off yeah. the ship. Yeah. And you don't feel good because you get bloated and your, your feet start swelling and your fingers start swelling. And it, who wants to feel like that? When you're on vacation, you want to feel good when you're on vacation. And that's true. And the last you want to look good because you've got pictures being made. Yeah, you, know, you don't want your face yeah. to be all bloated up. The last time we were on the cruise, we noticed we weren't eating as much as we had to eat before. But it was like you're not eating as much, and I'm not eating. I'm like, no, you know. So we did notice that we did not eat as much as we had normally mm -hmm. eaten. But it is easy to think, you know, every three hours you need to eat. Right. Well, the, and, and that's a good guideline. Every three hours is good, but you don't have to eat 600 calories every, every three, three hours. hours. <laughs> you, you, you pick one meal to have a um, large number of calories, but then keep the rest of it to like 200 calories or so. And, and you can eat quite a bit with 200 calories if you eat low calorie things. Thanks. And And what that does is to keep your blood sugar level even. So it's your, every three hours you're going to get more sugar and your insulin doesn't have to go up in order to bring that sugar down again because it's not going to you're eating the right kinds of calories that don't increase your blood sugar sky high so it's going to crash on you so and that's what you need to, every, every three hours is a good guideline and if you wait too long then you're starving and you're going to eat everything in sight because you're too hungry and your blood sugar gets low when your blood sugar gets low you want to eat more so you want every three hours, every two to three hours is, is a good guideline for eating. Well, that's good because I, I seem to do that on a cruise ship or any type, mm -hmm. type of travel. For some reason, when you're on vacation, you think about food. You do. It's part of the travel experience. It's, it, I don't like to go to um, chain restaurants when I, when I travel. I like to find a local restaurant. Yes, yes. Always choose a local restaurant and over a chain restaurant. Because I know what's in a chain restaurant, but I can get that at home. Right. And, and so I want something that's local. I want to yes. get something that I can't well, get at home. When we went up to Massachusetts, we were actually worse on that. And it was just, we went <coughs> up, and we did Boston, we did Salem. I think we were worse food-wise up there than we were Such on good the cruise food ship. in New England? Yes. Yeah. Because all the, the, there was a lot of seafood. We did eat, eat a lot of seafood, but then there are other things, you know, mm -hmm. gelato and things you have to try. The bread. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like the bread up north, okay? I'm going to tell you that now. Nothing like it. So, you know, there were things, you know. Right. And I could tell a, a, more of a difference when we were up north for that week than when we were on the cruise ship for that week. I could tell a difference. Yeah. In, yeah, I think we ate better on the cruise ship than we did and we were in New England. Well, you may not have been prepared for that, you know, when you went to New England. You weren't thinking about, you no, know, I'm not going to be on a cruise ship, so I don't have to worry about all that right, food so you, being available. Right, right because, yeah. And we thought about so you seafood. Yeah. We, we right. did eat a lot of seafood, which is good for you. Mm -hmm. But then the clam chowder is not actually, you know, the, the better choice probably in seafood. And then, of course, there are other things. I mean, yeah. you know, like I said, the bread, the gelato. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things that you eat. Right. You know, let's just have a little bit now because, you know, we've been on that diet for months. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I could tell a bigger difference when we were there than, than we were on oh, the yeah. cruise ship. Yeah. But, because, I mean, we did, and, and we didn't, I didn't think about it going to New England that we were going to have to watch a lot of the. Right. Yeah. You have to be prepared for it. Yeah, you do. You do. Think about where you're going. It's part of planning for your vacation is what am I going to eat on this vacation? What's going to be available to me? How am I going to make good choices? If you're going place where you can look up on, online, not on a cruise ship, because you really don't know what's going to be on the cruise ship. But if you're going to a restaurant and you can find it online, you can see what they've got and make your choices ahead of time. Well, a lot of the cruise lines have their menus available oh, for the restaurants okay. online. I mean, a lot of those you can access. So then you can, yeah. And especially now with having to use, you know, so much technology and stuff, paper menus, a lot of those are more readily available oh, so good. you can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, right. so that, that's a good part of your preparation for your trip is to look and see what you're going to eat and make, make those plans ahead of time. Yeah, because every night before me and Bill went to the dining room, we could pull up the menu and see what we were going to eat, and I already made my mind up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already knew. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so yes, you can. You can do that on a cruise ship now. Oh, good. Pretty much get what you're going to have. Yeah. Now, on a river cruise, which we're doing in March, I'm not sure how that works with menus. Yeah. Because I've never done one of those, but that'll be an experience to know when we go to Tulip Time in Amsterdam. I've only been on one cruise, and I tell you what, I don't even know where I went because it was the only cruise I've ever been on. And I was so overwhelmed by the ship that, that th where I went, the port paled in comparison to the, to the ship. Yeah. <laughs> All I remember is the ship because it's just so awe-inspiring, you know, it's so big and so, yeah, it's just all the sights and sounds on the ship are just so, um, that, that's what I remember. I don't even remember where we went. Well, and they all, the ship is, is like the, des the best destination can be. Yeah. I mean, you know. So many things to do and see on the yes. ship. You don't even have to get off the ship in the port. Oh, you, you don't. Just, you don't. You can have yeah. such a great week just being I, on board. I did. I was with a group of people, and we got off. We walked around. We went to some shops. We ate some, some ice cream, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and that, that, that was good. But I have no clue where we were. I don't remember. I just can't remember where we went because it was not, that wasn't, the, the ship itself was what, grabbed my my memory you know and I just well they put so much on them now there's mm -hmm. such great just destination system of sales when you're on a cruise ship yeah you know we were on the Mardi Gras now it's been almost two months ago now and I keep thinking about it but it was like being on uh, like another world I mean you know, of course COVID and not being able to, to cruise and that being the first time we had been on board yeah. a cruise ship since but it was just wonderful and that was a brand new ship that was a third sellout mm -hmm. so it was just so much to do and see and it's such such a new style ship well tell me if i'm wrong but what I, in my reading that i've been reading uh it seems like most cruise ships now have a light fare a menu you can ask for that oh they do they yeah. do and it's called can. different things on different ships right, but you can you can get a yeah. very healthy menu yeah. you can ask for things that are more healthy yeah. Than the other choices on right. the menu. You can. Yeah, you can. And and you're still in charge of what you eat. Don't let the people that you're sitting with, you know, t talk you into eating something you don't want to eat. Don't let the, the weight person talk you into eating something you don't want to eat. You know, that you, you can tell them I, I want an appetizer size, you know, or cut, the, cut it in half. I don't want the whole thing. Just bring me half of it so that you're not tempted by it sitting in front of you if you're ordering off the menu. If you're on the, on the uh, buffet line, it's a little harder to do that, but because um, things are usually portioned already and just pick it up. Um, I don't know with COVID if they still do that or not. Well, now they're they're pretty much serving you at okay. the buffets, but I'm not really the buffet eater on a cruise yeah. ship. I, I want to be. I mean, I You're like better being off staying on, away from. Buffets. I like being waited on. Okay, so I like going in and sitting down, and somebody waiting on me when I'm on a cruise ship. Yeah. Um, the portions of food are usually, um, I think, relatively. You know. I think they're a good size, but of course you can order as much as you want. Right. And of course I'm one of those people that knows if you want three appetizers, you can get it. You know, of course the appetizer usually doesn't get me in trouble. You know, but it's looking at everything else that you may get because there's so mm -hmm. many options for the entree right. and what right. you're going to eat. And then of course you fall right into dessert. Now this time desserts <clears throat> were something that I didn't have a lot of room for, so I didn't eat a lot of them. But the last night they had baked Alaska, and of course I knew I had to have that. <laughs> And then, of course, they brought it, and I was so excited, and I took, like, three bites, and I was like, I can't eat no more beer. I'm through. Yeah. You know, because I was full. Mm -hmm. So I didn't force it. But there are a lot of options. There's a lot of healthy choice options. There's a lot of other options on board. You, you may have to ask for it, but it's usually there. Well, I mean, usually on even, uh, I know from experience on Norwegian and Carnival, they when they bring the menu at night, there are a lot of different healthy choices already on their menu. Oh, good that you can ask for. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot yeah. of steamed veggies, a lot of things you can ask for. And of course, there's a lot of things on there you don't need to eat, I'm sure, but you yeah. know, make a better choice than those items, but. Well, yeah. sauces and creams will get you in trouble. Well, and that's probably where the, the soups so, yeah. get me in trouble. Right, right, right. Because the cream soups are just, that's all that cream I, in there. I, and, yeah, yeah. I'm a and soup that's, person. And that's, that's what increases the calories, increases the blood sugar. The, and, the, the yeah. peach soup and, and the, the strawberry soup. And it has more soup. sodium in yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Right. The, so, the um, peach soup and the strawberry soup yeah. probably are not good options yeah. for me. But one thing I've learned, whether it's dessert or, um, or, or rolls or whatever it is, after you've eaten a couple bites of it, you've really had the experience of eating that thing. So 
I, what I have is what I tell my clients is the three bite rule. You know, you want something that you know is not healthy for you, but you're on vacation, and part of the being on vacation is eating this thing that you always eat on vacation. Okay, right. So have it, but you know, split it with somebody else <laughs> if you can. If you can't, still eat three bites of it and eat it slowly. You know, and drink water, and then at, wait five minutes before you eat anything else that's sweet or or that's a roll, because it gives your brain time to realize that you've had that. You know, and, and, and usually I'm satisfied. I've had the three bites. It's not going to take me out of fat burn. It's not going to destroy my diet. It's not going to make me sick. But I've had that experience. I can say I ate that on, the, on vacation. So I'm not depriving myself of that. So that's, that's one of the things that, that can help you get through it, is to have it, but just have a little bit of it. And I, portion sizes are, you have, you, here in the United States, when you ask for dessert, you get, a pie that's like about that big, right? Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> you get a oh cake yes. that's a mile high, you get a, a bowl of ice cream like that big. Yep. But, you know, <clears throat> overseas, it's not that big. Portion sizes are a lot smaller for desserts. Oh yes, definitely yeah. for desserts. Now, yeah. now, I'm not talking about the meals, I'm talking oh, about the desserts. No, because yeah. And, yeah. And go to Italy and get pizza in Naples. And, and when they brought it out, when they brought the pizza to the table, there was four of us, and we thought this pizza is for all four of us. No, no, one person. One, one, one a piece, okay. But you're right, when they brought dessert out, it was considerably Very smaller. Very small, yeah. It was, it was yeah. a lot smaller. It was, yeah. you're right. Right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every time I've traveled overseas, I've noticed that the desserts are really much smaller. So it's, it's much easier just to eat a small amount of dessert because you only get a small amount of dessert. So that's all you're going to eat. Well, yeah. you're, you're, that's right, that's right. Yeah. So we just have to all remember those healthy rules we've learned. Um, yes, steaming the vegetables is better than frying, the, you know, and you get f fried everything now these days. You know, oh, fried, yes. Fried perfectly good green bean and you're going to fry it so that... <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> or I know. an onion that's a good vegetable and you, you fry that and it takes it, it takes it from being a healthy vegetable to an unhealthy vegetable. Uh, um, vegetable. And the same thing with meats, you know, how you cook it makes a big difference. All the oils and things you can put on it. Um, and you, you take a steak, you know, you, you get you get a small steak and they put butter on it. <laughs> Add to the calories yes, and the do. fat level. They do. You know? they <laughs> so, do. But the steak, if the, if the steak is good, you don't need anything on it. You know? Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, if you have to put something on it to make it taste good, it's not a good piece of steak. You're correct about that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, you're right. Exactly. But it may be that you, when you go on vacation, you always eat a big steak with butter and mushrooms and all that that's what you eat on vacation so you're going to have that but you don't have to eat 12 ounces you can eat four ounces and well, they, and it, it's also easy to ask for your steak cooked without the butter okay because they, you will, could, do, they yeah. will do that they'll, they'll cook it without the butter so they will yeah it's just asking for what you want yeah that is true well this has been very interesting tonight learning all the the pros and cons we need to look for when we're you know, and you don't stop to think that it's your sugar that goes up, and then, of course, that's the, the downside. Right. That's why a couple hours later you feel like the opposite, like you were full. Now you're not. Now you feel like you need something else to eat because your blood sugar. Your blood sugar has gone down, and your body's telling you you need more sugar, but you've got plenty of sugar. It's just in your cells, mostly in your fat cells, <laughs> because that's where they're stored. Yes, and yeah. I, have, I have plenty of those I'm storing, okay? <laughs> You know, I tell people there's one thing I don't have a problem with, and that is retaining fat cells, okay? <laughs> they love me, okay? They definitely do. You know, I hear you. I hear you. You know, and it's not that um, I had a Weight Watchers coach years ago in Florida, and she used to say, if you want that, that she, her thing was muffins, cupcakes. She said, if you want that cupcake, just go and get it and split it with somebody and just have it. She said, because the first bite is the best bite you're going to have. That's exactly the three bite rule. The first yep. bite, by the third bite, you had that experience. Yep, that's what she used yeah. to say. You know, exactly. three bites. She's in, exactly you, right. You, you, you've had that experience. Well, I don't want people to feel guilty about eating. You know, that, that's just not a good thing, because it, it, the, you're not going to stick with a diet if you're always feeling guilty about something. I want people to enjoy their food. It's like with Thanksgiving coming up. I said, you got, you really have three choices. If you're on an eating plan, you're either going to stay in fat burn, you're going to stay exactly on eating plan, not eating anything you, you don't want. You know, that's a choice you make, and you can do that. And most of the time, if you tell your family, I'm not going to eat these things because I'm trying to get healthy, they're not going to push you to eat 
you know, more than you, than you want to eat. That's one choice. Another choice is to stay mostly on plan, but make a few modifications because the things that you only get to eat at Thanksgiving, right. mashed potatoes, you know, and, and not mashed pie. sweet potatoes, pecan pie, uh, things like that, yes. that you only eat at, at, you know, and if you're going to eat it, even if you just eat three bites of each of those things, that might, might take you out of fat burn, but that's okay. You go back in, on plan the next day, you'll get back in fat burn in a couple of days. But that would be your second choice, is just to make some modifications, not go hog wild. The third thing is, hey, it's Thanksgiving. It comes once a year. I'm going to eat anything I want as much as I want to. I know I'm going to feel sick. I know I'm going to get, get bloated. I know my feet are going to swell up, but it's my choice. Okay? And don't feel guilty about it. It's one day out of the whole year, you know? So make that choice and live with that choice and celebrate Thanksgiving. But just remember, it's about Thanksgiving. It's about what you're grateful for. It's not about the food. Even though we make it about the food, we make do. it about the people that you're with. Make it about the blessings you've had during the year instead of about the food. But make the choice to do it and then don't feel guilty about it. Just get the next day, get back on plan again. One day out of the year, it's not going to... And I think that's yeah. something we all need to learn, especially whether it's Thanksgiving or it's holiday or it's vacation. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we're going we're gonna to make choices <laughs> that we normally wouldn't make, but then we're going to be back to reality and we can all get back, back to where we were. Well, this has been a really good show, Dr. Jean. We're going to have to have you back on again and talk Thank about you. healthy eating and traveling and all the good stuff. So we're going to say goodnight, and we'll be back next week for Travel Talk with Lori, and we'll have another special guest next week and join in to see what we're talking about on next week's show to do with travel. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Pull back the shades on a blue sky, sunny day. Watch all the worries of the world just sail away. No. Keep your heart wide open I'm too busy feeling this free to see, so much to do, I'm too busy feeling this free.